Hey, Muso here. We're going to go through some more example problems in conservation of energy. In this video, I'm just going to give two examples. I don't think it's going to really even be that long. Um, and they're both dealing with how springs, uh, spring energy can be con converted into two different types. Uh, I could combine it and do a, all three in one, but I'm not going to. So in this scenario here, I'm doing a situation where I have a block that is going to be compressed on a spring and it's going to eventually turn into kinetic energy and then over here I'm going to do a similar problem where it's getting compressed down and it's going to shoot up into gravitational potential energy. I'm going to come back to this after we're just going to focus on this side and on this side I need to give you a little bit more information I didn't finish writing it all out uh, what I've got here is I've got a block that I'm going to say it has a mass of 2.5 kilograms it's attached to a spring that has a spring constant of 6 newtons per meter. And I'm compressing that spring only 0.4 meters. And then we're going to release it and it's going to shoot forward. Okay? And uh, I've, it's a two-fold question. I want to know what is my maximum speed attained? So what is V max? And I also want to know where we have uh, V max for the first time. So let me answer that part first. Once we release this spring, the spring will continue to uncompress until it gets the equilibrium position. So I'm going to draw the block here in pink. I'm not going to draw the spring in there, but now it's in its natural position. The spring is going to eventually then start to want to go back. It's going to continue moving forward a little bit due to its inertia, but it's going to experience a restoring force back to its um, back to the direction in which it came from. It's not going to stay over here. What's, what's really going to happen, it's going to expand out, and it's going to no longer want to expand, but its own inertia is going to allow it to continue to expand, and then it's going to pull back in. If there was actually no friction, the spring would oscillate back and forth forever. We're going to pretend it doesn't. This block is not attached to the spring. If that's the case, then here it's going to reach Vmax. And actually, since it's not attached, it's going to travel like that forever, whew, until it reach, experiences an outside force, but I'm not including friction, so that won't be in play here. Now, if it was attached to the spring, this is still where it would experience V max, but it would immediately start to slow down, get to its maximum expansion, and then start to come back, and it would oscillate back and forth, back and forth, back and forth forever, really, because there are no outside forces. We're going to ignore all of that. What we're going to worry about is, what is that velocity there? And to do that, um, we're going to address all of our energy types in the beginning and all of our energy types at the end. And recognize, since there is no friction, uh, we can say that the ma uh, mechanical energy here is equal to my total mechanical energy here. That's a great way to get started. You can say E total if you want to instead of mechanical. And so now what we need to do is identify, well, what kind of energy do we have here? And what kind of energy do we have here? And hopefully you can see that there's only two types of energy that we're dealing with. We're dealing with stored elastic potential energy, and we're dealing with kinetic energy. We're not going to worry about gravitational potential energy because the object is not changing in height. So what I should do, the most clear way, is I'm going to say the PE of the spring in the first position plus the KE in the first position will be my total mechanical. I'm going to do the same thing down here. My total mechanical down here will be my PE of the spring in the second position plus the KE here. However, this was a little bit more than I needed to do because you probably can tell. In the very beginning, the object is not moving. So there is no KE in the beginning. It's just stored energy. And here, when we're at our equilibrium position, we no longer have stored energy because X is zero. One half KX squared, this whole thing goes to zero. So I have no stored energy. So I really could have just jumped to that point. I chose not to because I want you to see, um, I think, the best way of starting these all up. Or I could write out PE, because remember, mechanical energy is mechanical energy. So mechanical energy anywhere is equal to mechanical energy everywhere, unless there's an outside force uh, coming into play, like uh, friction, energy loss. But we're not dealing with that in this problem. So I'm going to say the potential energy of my spring in the first position plus the kinetic energy in the first position that must add up to equaling my potential energy of the spring in the second position plus the kinetic there. And we could do that at every position. But once again, as I already said, that KE in the beginning is zero, the PE at the second spot is zero. So really, the PE of the spring in the first position must equal my KE in the second position. So now I can expand this out into my equation. One half KX squared is equal to one half m v squared. I'm looking for v. That's my maximum v. So I got to isolate v. I can get rid of my one halves. And now I can, um, I'm going to divide the m over and I'm going to radical it to get rid of that square. So I'm going to say v is equal to the square root of 
kx squared over m. And I think that's a perfectly fine equation. I could simplify this a little bit more if I wanted to, but I'm not going to. Now, uh, because I'm terrified of this radical and the square and the division, I'm going to throw in like super, super many parentheses. I'm going to say, I'm going to open up two parentheses up top. I'm going to say k times x squared. I'm still not going to close that. I'll explain why after. Divided by m. And now I'm going to close that top one. That will allow me to kind of ensure that this entire quantity is being radicaled. Now I know this is overkill. Any of you that know your order of operations will tell me that I didn't need to toss in all these parentheses. But I'm in the camp that says throw in more parentheses. You can't go wrong as long as you have something to close every one that you open. If I don't have enough, something can go wrong. So I'm trying to kind of get you to maybe over pad it on purpose. I'm going to get rid of my black line here because i got to crouch into this spot here. Um, I want to plug, plug in my numbers. So I'm going to do open, open, 6, close, open, 0.4 squared, close, divided by open, 2.5, close, and then I'm going to close the whole thing. Let's see if this comes out all right. Uh-oh, what did I do wrong here? Ah. Look at my calculator, right? Yeah, let me just do it again. What am I doing wrong here? Okay, two divisions. Don't want that. Let's try this again. Oh, and I have a five here instead of a six. What's going on with me? And I have an extra parenthesis there. I'm going to blame my calculator, not me. <laughs> One division. Phew. 2.5, close, close. There we go. 0.619, I'm going to say 0.62 meters per second. Awesome. That completes that part of the problem. I'm going to erase this, so pause it if you didn't get this work down. Because I need to get over here. Ah, might as well get this whole side gone so I have more workspace. All right, so over here I've got, um, let me explain it a little bit better. I'm taking an object with a mass of 1.7 kilograms, and I've compressed it down. So I did work on it to compress it down. I've compressed it down 0.25. Now if I want to get all gnarly about this, I'm going to toss a negative in there because I went down, right? Uh, I'm going to lock it in, and then I'm going to eventually unlock it so it shoots up, and this sucker is going to fly up to a certain height, and then it's going to fall back down. Once the spring gets the equilibrium position, it's at its, its completely stretched point. Now, again, as I've said before, the spring will continue to move up a little bit before it stretches itself back down, but I don't care about that at that spot. Here's where I'm really reaching maximum speed, and now that object is traveling upward with initial velocity, and it reaches the highest point and comes back down. Now, I could go through and try to do kinematics for some of this. I'm not going to use a pure energy analysis. And let's just go through and write down what we have where, just so we can understand what I'm saying. So, like, here, my mechanical energy at position 1 is equal to stored spring energy. And that's actually the only energy it has, but I'm going to write the other two down. I'm going to... Uh, consider my gravitational and my kinetic. Wow, I, I did not give myself enough room, but I think you get the idea. I'm not going to put sub G here because I did S for spring, so I'm going to uh, uh, go under the assumption that PE without the subscript is my gravitational potential. Here, I'm going to say is my second mechanical energy position I want to look at, ME sub 2. And I'm going to write the same thing down. I'm going to write PES 2 plus PE 2 plus Ke2. Then, I gotta look at its highest position. This block is gonna eventually shoot itself up here. I don't know where. I'm just gonna over-exaggerate it, and I'm gonna say it's way up here. And I am going to write down, this is where its velocity is zero, so this is my maximum height. I'm gonna say Me3 is equal to, once again, I'm gonna say Pes3 plus Pe3 plus Ke3. Now, 
This is overkill. I can get rid of a lot of this. In fact, I can get rid of two terms at every position. I do want to point out that I'm looking at maximum height above the spring's equilibrium position. I didn't quite see that, and that's important to define. Remember, potential energy is always to a reference spot. So I'm going to say the spot that I'm looking at is here. So I want to know how high above my equilibrium position did the block get, not how high above where I compressed. Now, let's think about it. In the very beginning, we're fully compressed. That's gone. Oh, no, that's not gone. That's what's there. What is wrong with me, right? Let's do that again. This is PE. I wish I had an undo button when I was using a marker board. I've got no gravitational potential energy there. I've got no kinetic energy there. Here, I'm at maximum speed. This is where I'm going the fastest. I haven't started to slow down due to gravity. The spring isn't pulling me back down or pushing me up. I actually have no spring energy, and I have no gravitational energy because that's my position. That's my zero spot, so it's only kinetic. And then up here, I have no spring energy. Of course, it's not attached to the spring at all. I'm at my highest position. I have no kinetic energy. It's about to fall back down. So ultimately, I can say, remember, as long as there's no energy loss, Me1 equals Me2 equals Me3. Might as well write that out. Me1 equals Me2 plus Me3, which means the position of the potential energy at the first position is equal to my kinetic energy at that second position, which is equal to my final potential energy at the highest position. Because I care about my highest point, I don't care about this term. I don't even know how fast it's going yet. Okay, I care about these two terms. And it reminds me, I do need to give you a K value. I haven't done that yet. I did intend to earlier. Oops. Uh, so I'm going to say the spring here has a K value, not kinetic energy, a K value, spring constant of, we'll say, 2 newtons per meter. Let's get back to this equation here. Uh, that means my 1 half kx squared in the beginning is equal to my mgh at the end. Okay. H is what I'm looking for. I'll finish this up here. H is, well, i got to divide mg over. So it's going to be kx squared divided by 2mg. I just put that 1 half. I put the 2 under so it, ah, it looks a little cleaner. So now let's just plug in, right? I'm going to toss in some parentheses up top or make sure I hit enter after I do my work. 2 for k times 0.25, and we're going to square that. Again, we don't put the negative, and it's a scalar term. Uh, I'm going to hit enter after I put all that in my work. I'm going to open up a parentheses down here. 2 times uh, 1.7 times gravity. I'm going to use 10 for gravity to make this simple. I'm not going to put the negative in, once again, scalar terms. I only put the negative in for scalar terms if it's subtracting from the total. So I'm going to do 0.25 squared. I'm going to multiply it by the 2. That's my top term. I'm going to divide by, I'm going to open parentheses, 2 times 1.7 times 10. Close that. All right, doesn't get very high up, does it? Uh, 0 0.00, I'm going to round that to 4. 0 0.004 meters did not go very far whatsoever, but hey, it is the answer. Okay, I hope these were okay examples on springs. I probably could have done a slightly better job using, like, I don't know, prettier, more rounded numbers, but what's the point? This is fine. This is perfectly legit. That's going to end energy uh, uh, videos. I do have another video I'm going to be putting up on Atwood machines, pulleys, but that's more for the AP level. Don't worry about it at the high school level. Okay, that's it. Thank you.